So here we are at Nightcap National Park. We're about to go on to protest the falls. This walk is currently closed due to COVID-19. I filmed all this before the closure. Welcome to Virtual Nature with Wendy. Uh, I'm running these virtual tours uh, because I can't run my actual eco tours out of Byron Bay at the moment because of uh, COVID-19. So I'm just taking people around to all my favorite spots and doing it one just me and the camera that's why my production values are a little low um, and and just sharing my favorite bits of nature with people so enjoy this is one of my favorite places this is called protest the falls this is so important for so many reasons um, this was actually the epicenter of what would be what would become the, the first successful environmental protest in Australia's history. So in the in the 1970s uh, hippies uh, started moving to this area um, and in 1973 there was uh, the Australian Union of Students held uh, a festival in this little dairy town called Nimbin which is nearby here. Uh, they, they held what was called the Aquarius Festival. Now this wasn't a festival, a music festival as we know it. It was more one about sharing ideas and about living with tolerance and at one with nature. And so a lot of people came for that. And then they started like buying up the old dairy farms and moving in into the region. Then in uh, 1979, there was a group here called the Terrania Creek Action Group. Now they, Terrania Creek actually runs straight through here. Um, they knew that uh, the loggers were just about to plan to log in this forest. Um, there wasn't much of the, the beautiful big scrub rainforest left at all. There was only 1% of the original rainforest. Um, so I don't know what the loggers were going to keep doing. I don't know if they will keep going until there wasn't a stick left. I have no idea. But anyway, these guys up here said no more. And they, they grabbed themselves they got themselves organised, they created this Terrania Creek Action Group and they uh, started protesting. Um, they would do blockades but they were also lobbying the government and they were also using the media to try and get public opinion on side. And after the initial blockade in August 1979, um, there was then a, a series of court cases that toed and throwed but eventually um, the conservationists won and the government agreed to stop logging uh, the rainforest here and in fact they agreed to log, uh, not log all of the rainforest in New South Wales ever. Uh, so this was a monumental decision. They declared what was left of the Rainforest National Park and this is part of Nightcap National Park which is one of the biggest national parks in the, in the area. Um, and then this special place which was ironically where I've heard where the police actually camped is called now called Protester Falls. Now I was lucky enough to do this walk uh, last year on the 40th anniversary of the protest at uh, Terrania Creek um, and I was also lucky enough to do it with some of the key uh, people from the protests uh, which included uh, Hugh and Nan Nicholson and uh, Dale and Pugh. Um, and, and, and quite a few others. So it was, a, it was an amazing uh, time to be here with those guys. And I was lucky enough to be able to ask Nan, who's this great uh, rainforest botanist, um, all these questions about, about the rainforest around us, which was just an extraordinary opportunity. And I, I absolutely, it is one of my fondest memories. So I, I very much enjoyed it. And before you think about Great Waterfall, I will grab my virtual cozies and um, have a virtual swim here. You can't. Well, you can have a virtual one, but you can't have an actual one uh, because it is also the home of the Flays Bard Frog, which is a uh, endangered uh, frog that uh, basically only lives around here now. And um, if you, uh, a lot of people have things on their skins like uh, sunscreen and uh, moisturizer and an insect spray and and that goes into the creek here and frogs absorb everything through their skin um, and they were dying um, because people were swimming here so swimming here is is, is prohibited 
uh, but we can still go and have a look at the waterfall and enjoy that. But this is a Flay's barred frog. Right. Well, let's explore. This beautiful boardwalk is, is amazing. And we come across this beautiful tree here. I don't know if you can see its, it's bark and um, it's all this sort of scaling bark. This is actually a red cedar. So this area was, when the loggers came to this area, it was actually this tree that they were after. Um, it's called red gold in some places and unfortunately for it um, it was a highly valued timber uh, that's what they originally came for in the 1840s and then they started clearing the rest of the rainforest but fortunately they didn't get here thanks to the protesters there's also this amazing stand of bangalow palms in here you can see they're very tall and thin as they go up to the canopy Bangalows are, are amazing uh, palm tree uh, that is very prevalent um, in this lowland subtropical rainforest but in particular uh, there's a lot of them here um, in this particular so, so this is actually a palm frond from a bangalow palm and I don't know if you can see it's very flexible and malleable um, and the Aboriginal people would use this to make um, bags and um, carry things but they could also carry water um, in this because it's also waterproof what an amazing resource now I must say I've walked this walk many many times but what's really weird at the moment is I'm the only one here uh, and it's just me you guys and this magnificent rainforest what a, an amazing opportunity now this amazing tree with these amazing buttress roots is a yellow carabine which is also a very common tree here. And you can see it's a very big tree that's like all of these trees are just trying to get their leaves inside the um, up in the top of the canopy. Now look at this amazing vine. I wouldn't be swinging on this though any Tarzans out here. Um, I did ask Nan about this vine. She wasn't exactly positive, but she thinks it's a blood vine. Uh, there's all sorts of vines and epiphytes here in the rainforest. The, the, a great weight of the whole rainforest is actually taken up by uh, things like vines and, and epiphytes, which are the, like the bird's nest ferns and the staghorns and, and the elk horns and the, and the, and the orchids. They, they dominate. So this is actually a walking stick palm and you can see it's actually producing berries on it. Well, I've had by all accounts we can eat the berries off this one. Let's see. See how we go. And quite like a lot of um, our bush fruits, that it has a, it, when it goes over your palate you, you certainly get different tastes. It's quite a mild taste though. Now here's a cool bit of fungi, um, with this kind of shine on it too, I suspect this is bioluminescent. So at night, I suspect this one will glow in the dark. That is pretty darn cool. Now the forest floor is covered at the moment with these little tiny flowers. These are in fact the flowers of the Bangalow palm. Eventually the boardwalk gives way to this dirt path so it's uh, although it's quite an easy walk it is uh, certainly uh, not wheelchair friendly all of the way but some of the way it is and then we come across one of my favorite bits which is the little bridge across the creek. So 
This little stream here is um, just lined with these amazing lilies. They're called Hemholtzia lily. And what's so special about these, other than they're just their sea magnificence and, and glory, some of these are up to two meters tall. Um, but the only place they exist on the planet is in the caldera of this volcano. Pretty amazing, yeah? So this one here is called Maiden's Blush. I didn't know what this one was until Nan told me on our lovely walk. It is quite a lovely tree. It's kind of a pinkish colour, I suppose. But it's uh, one of its redeeming, well, noticeable factors is it has all these suckers that come up. And it's that and its leaves are a pretty big giveaway that it's uh, Maiden's Blush. I gotta say, the last time I was here was um, before the fires hit in November, and uh, there was no hardly any water coming through this creek. It was the drought had really bitten hard here, and uh, all this flowing water really wasn't flowing much at all. It's so nice to see it flowing again now. Okay, our first glimpse of the falls. How gorgeous is this? Okay, how beautiful is this? This is Protester Falls. So you can see here where the fire came up the top of the falls. This is actually dry sclerophyll forest up here. And then down in the valley here is the, is the rainforest. But it was the dry sclerophyll forest up here that was burning. But in this area, rainforest also did burn because it was so dry. 